<laughs> I am so excited to be with you. Thank you for allowing me to join you. And of course, welcome to the 18th annual Sweet Begins Tea. And a huge welcome, of course, to our virtual guests. And hello to the staff uh, who are hosting a watch party at the North Lawndale Employment Network office. I wish we could kind of see them and have a camera there too and see if they're having as much fun as we are. This afternoon, I invite everyone, both near and far, to join me in embracing this year's theme, which is Soar to New Heights. We'll celebrate what happens when stakeholders invest in the North Lawndale Employment Network. We'll sip tea and enjoy the sweetness of e love honey, which I'm not going to lie, you guys are great, but I'm here for the tea and the honey. <laughs> Most importantly, you'll hear the stories of our wardies and applaud their monumental accomplishments. So now it is time to meet our co-chairs. I'd like to present Tiana Conley, Vice President of Global Portfolio Strategy, Mars, and Elaine Gringer, Director, AT&T External Affairs. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us. I'm gonna try to keep my remarks a bit short because I know that you're staring at that wonderful food on your table, and far be it for me to stand in between you and that. Um, seriously though, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, I said a little bit in the room before, um, truly we're here to celebrate the incredible accomplishments of North Lawndale Employment Network, um, the incredible, um, amazing work that the organization has done to build individuals and community. And we're here to community build and uh, build the future of the organization together, hopefully by raising some money. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna pass it over to my co-chair Elaine to introduce herself. Thank you. 
Thank you, everyone. And we are so pleased to have all of you here. You know, I'm just going to share something real quick. I've been working with the NLN for quite some time, and I have learned a lot about bees and honey. <laughs> You know, you probably already know one of the most important ingredients for, you know, honey is flowers. So, and we just kind of bear with me for a moment, and we will just kind of think about LEN as a bed of flowers and a lot of worker bees that are embracing and swarming. I'm on my bee terms, right? <laughs> They're swarming around the North Lawndale community. And they are basically doing a lot of great work there. So we just want to thank you all for being here. I want you to open your hearts, your minds. And when you start looking at some of these presentations or some of the people, I do want you to also open your pocketbooks. <laughs> so if you don't mind, thank you so much for joining us today. And Tiana and myself, you know, would like to raise a glass to you guys and wish you all the best with um, North Lawndale. So if you didn't already, um, we'd like to invite you, in front of you, there is a, a glass of the bee's knees. Um, we'd like to invite you to kick off the day with a toast with the bee's knees. Um, <laughs> it's gin, lemon juice, our very own bee love honey and lemon. So I'd like to toast to our sweet beginnings tea. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. You all are really excited about the toast. <laughs> I don't know how many of you Wait, have you tasted that drink? Sip lightly, people. We've got a whole afternoon to get through. <laughs> that was a great toast. <laughs> Tiana and Elaine, thank you. Um, so as we continue to settle into our afternoon, I'm pleased to bring to the stage Executive Chef Terrence Zubieta here at the Park Hyatt Chicago. Chef Terrence Zubieta, uh, we extend our infinite gratitude to you and to your team for presenting such a lovely and scrumptious menu. Some of, me, some of you may have already sampled, so you know how great it's going to be. Um, chef, where are you? Oh, there you are. Hi. He's right here. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Chef Zubieta. He's going to tell us about the menu. I'd, uh, I'd have a toast with you guys, but I'm still on the clock, so <laughs> maybe a little, you know, in a couple hours when I get out of here, then I'll, I'll have a toast. So um, enjoy the toast. I hope it was delicious. I'm sure it was delicious. Um, on behalf, first and foremost, of Park High Chicago, myself and the team here, we are very, very honored to have you here to host this event. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so the food's in front of you. I, I know maybe some of you guys have dug in already. I'm pleased to. Um, so we've got an assortment of food here. Um, and we've tried to incorporate the bee love honey that was um, delivered to us here in the hotel. Um, and personally, I'd like to say when we did this tasting a few weeks ago, um, it was probably one of the most delicious uh, honeys that I've, I've tasted um, in my career. Uh, and I'm not lying just because... <laughs> Not only is it local, um, but the flavor itself is, is amazing. It's the, one of the cleanest, most floral, uh, most versatile honeys I've ever tasted. So we try to incorporate it into a lot of the menu items that you have in front of you, from the honey potted cream to the honey mustard for the chicken salad. Um, we even put a little bit into the wheat with goat cheese um, to just enhance everything that's, that's um, uh, the, the product that, that it's in. So um, again, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Enjoy the food. Um, and thank you. That is a ringing endorsement of the honey uh, coming from a chef, isn't it? Uh, thank you, chef. So at this moment, as you enjoy your tea time, am I yelling? I mean, you can, okay. It sounds really loud to me. You guys can hear me in the back, though, so. Um, I want to draw your attention to the screens uh, to view a special video provided by Ebony Magazine and J.P. Morgan Chase. It previews a new series on black entrepreneurs featuring Chicago's own urban Mm, I talk for a living. Apiary Social Enterprise. Sweet beginnings. Enjoy your tea.
My name is Brenda Holmes. I'm the president and CEO of the North Mondale Employment Network and the founder of our social enterprise, Sweet Beginnings, and our Beloved Cafe. The neighborhood of North Mondale, located on the west side of Chicago, is probably known for all of the social ills associated with poverty. And when you are battling poverty, you're about surviving, and your survival often leads you to making poor decisions. We learned that nearly 60% of the people that are adults in this community had had some involvement in the criminal justice system. J.P. Morgan Chase was one of the very first local donors to support our cattle campaign at a leadership level of $1 million. They helped to make this facility possible. And we created a four-week cognitive-based job readiness program, but we couldn't get a job. <laughs> and if we're a workforce development organization, you got to make sure folks can connect to work. So the question became, what kind of business should we get into? I learned that beekeeping is passed on through storytelling. That way there's no barrier academically to people learning the art and the science of beekeeping. That's why we launched Sweet Beginnings. And we want them to understand how do you work with others? How do you receive supervision? How disciplined are you? All the things that employers are looking for in terms of work ethic. Have you guys had samples? Yeah. Okay, so right I, out of the frame. And what'd you think? Oh, it's yeah. amazing. It's better than the It is than amazing. The These were people who have served their time. And when you realize that the stigma of having a criminal record was bearing you from work, you have to do something about that. Being a black woman in business, my voice wasn't always heard. And when I started, people did not take me seriously, but J.P. Morgan Chase has been just an incredible partner in this journey. To have a Fortune 500 banking institution see value in not only my leadership, but my vision was something that strengthened my commitment. And as a result, they have a program that has opened up doors for men and women that have backgrounds and that is changing the trajectory of their lives. I'm really excited about Beginnings future. You know, people will laugh at your dreams and that's okay, that means you're dreaming a little bigger. People do deserve second chances because we're all human. And I believe that that's part of what we do that is important. We have to help a person rediscover their own self-worth.
I'm back. I know, tea is delicious. It's not working. <laughs> Can we talk about what a great video that was? And I think we should also talk about Brenda, who's making her way back to her seat. Because, uh, First of all, it was a very compelling, motivational video, I think we can all agree. And it demonstrates just how anything is possible when you're determined to make positive change. I think we all agree that Brenda is a powerhouse, especially when it comes to bringing dreams to fruition. I think we can also agree that the tea is awesome. Right? Thank you. Always clap for tea. <laughs> Any favorites? Shout them out, salmon. All of them, can't pick. So good, it's like picking a kid, can't. <laughs> the tart, dessert, that's always, always a favorite. The North Lawndale Employment Network's mission is to improve the earnings potential of the North Lawndale community through innovative employment initiatives that lead to economic advancement and an improved quality of life. North Lawndale Employment Network imagines a world where anyone who wants to work can achieve sustainability and secure a future without the burden of working multiple jobs. They imagine a world where the job acquired commands a respectable living wage, where communities can grow and thrive prosperously, a world where unemployment and its dire consequences no longer exist. NLEN is thankful to play such a significant role in changing the lives of people for the better every single day. This mission shall never pass, but only flourish further. NLEN accomplished a whole lot during 2022. They were featured in Metropolis, the North Lawndale Employment Network sees through employment barriers for the formerly incarcerated. NLEN was awarded the CNDA Award, the Richard H. Dryhouse Award for or Dreehouse, excuse me, for Outstanding Nonprofit Real Estate Development Project, the IIDA Philanthropic Award, I got more, American Bankers Association Award on Economic Inclusion in partnership with Wintrust Bank, and the Public Allies Chicago Partner of the Year. Mm -hmm. So at this time, let's extend a warm welcome to the stage, NLEN Board President and President and CEO of PolicyLink, Dr. Michael McAfee, for a year in review and a look at the heights to which NLEN will be soaring in the year 2023 and beyond. Please put your hands together and help me welcome Dr. McAfee. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being with us today. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read to you. I'm going to share a couple of highlights from 
the notes here, I think there's something really special about in in that it puts results front and center at everything that it does. But it also does something else. It has moved beyond charity. And charity is important. We do need to alleviate human suffering. We ought to also have to tend to the systems that make charity necessary. And NLEN is working to make sure that we have systems in place. And we just saw, a, we just saw on television what it looks like when we have systems failure, no matter what color your skin. The since the murder of Tyree Nichols is an example of that. NLEN is doing nation building work. This is what it looks like block by block, street by street, city by city, state by state. And what I wanted to share with you this morning was some of the successes of this work, the work of being results-based. You know, oftentimes when you work with returning citizens, um, the knock on the efforts are that they don't work and they're not sustained. But NLEN has more than 90% success rate. Think about that. Yeah. Same could be said for workforce development programs. You know, it's one thing to train people, it's another to get them in a job, and it's another for them to be able to stay in those jobs. More than 90% of the folks are staying in the jobs past the 30 day marker. Their incomes are going up, their credit scores are being improved. This is what we've always hoped for. And then all the end is making it happen across the city. But in addition to that, NLE is making sure that people have good jobs. It's not enough just to have a job. You need to have a job that pays a family sustaining wage with benefits, right? And that's what NLE is working towards. Not just requiring folks to go find an employer, get any type of job, and be done. That's not our work. That's really hard to do. But last year, more than 250 folks got jobs in NLE. In. So I wanted to share that. You know, the last thing I'll share is that, you know, NLEN is so much more the training efforts. We also partner with a host of partners in the community to make sure that um, the folks who come through our doors have the supports that they need, whether it's food, clothing, jobs, counseling, et cetera. We provide that. And that's only a result of the support that you provide this organization. You know, when you're serving folks, folks' lives are not compartmentalized. So when you invest in a way where the capital isn't restricted, it allows the NLEN team to do their best work. So I wanted to thank you for the way you've contributed. If you've not been to the West Side and seen the new facility, you should go and see it. It is a testament to what can be done in a community. It's especially a testament when people think so little of what we can do. We don't think little of what we do. You're going to see excellence every step of the way when you walk in that building. What I'm most proud of serving as chair of the board is that, you know, if you came to see an LAN, you don't have to schedule an appointment to see excellence. You can walk in that door and they're ready to go. The manufacturing facility is first class. The training is first class. The way you're going to be greeted is first class. And the facility is first class. And it's that way 24-7, and that's the way it should be. So I wanted to thank you for that. So I'm going to leave my remarks there, and I'm going to introduce you to Brenda. Um, I've been on an amazing journey with Brenda, and I don't even need to read this script because <laughs> I just love Brenda. You know, I love Brenda so much. I got up at 3:30 on a flight from Oakland to get here today. <laughs> and I love Brenda so much because we connect around the thing that really only matters to me which is doing good work and we connect around doing good work because in a world where so many people have become jaded so many people settle for just doing the bare minimum Britta is pursuing greatness 24 7 and I love being around someone who take a little bitty raggedy ass building on the west side <laughs> And the most profound things happen in it. 
I don't know if you all have ever seen the building where we started. It's a special origin story, folks. It's a special story. And it's a special story because most people can't see brilliance and excellence in that. And brilliant, brilliant was able to take that building and build a board and build a staff that knew that we were so much bigger than those four walls. And look at us today. And I remember the stories and the pain of folks not wanting to listen to Brenda. The disrespect that you get as you move through a community trying to get support and people smile in your face, but they're really not interested in what you have to offer. But the funders in here, you've stayed with Brenda over the years, and it's only because of you that we're here. And so I want to thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you look at all the philanthropic reports that are out there, no matter how much money is flowing in communities, only one to five percent of it goes to of color led organizations. And yet we're asked to save the nation repeatedly. The thing that I love about Brenda is whether she has the money or she doesn't, she's going to save this nation. She's going to save this community. That's a gift, folks. You know, when I'm at my lowest at times, you know, when a mentor said to me once, says, you know, Michael, Rosa Parks didn't say she would do her work when there was a grant, only if there was a grant agreement. <laughs> and, you know, as much as I hated hearing that when it first was said to me, <laughs> it was really true that if you're going to do this work, it's got to be in your soul. This is soul work. And I connect with Brenda because our souls are aligned around liberating our people. And there's not a better person that I would have wanted to be on a journey with for more than 10 years, laughing together, crying together, struggling together to be in this place. And I'll share with you, the last thing I'll share is, you know, we sit at different spaces in our, in our, in our roles. But we feed off of each other all the time with our vision. You know, when it came time to build the facility on the west side, I was uh, like, Brenda, it's time for us to do this. And you know, Brenda's so gracious, she can ignore you with a smile, right? <laughs> so Brenda just ignored me asking and really encouraging us to do this for about a year and a half but so gracious. It was like, it's time to raise these millions of dollars to do this. It was like, we can't just raise $3 million. That's not going to get us through a year. And to watch Brenda find the courage to say, I'm going to do what's not been done on the West Side. I'm going to raise, I don't know, it was nearly $15 million, not more, to bring what needs to be on the West Side there. That is a special gift. But I share that story because we give each other strength. We give each other strength to overcome typical barriers that so many of us in this room face every single day. And I'm grateful for that because many people don't have that gift. And because they don't have that gift, they settle when it's not time to settle. And what I know is as long as Britta has a breath to breathe, she's gonna be doing this work. So I'm grateful to call you my friend and my sister. Thank you. Expecting that in, uh, but I feel it. And thank you for your heartfelt love and support along this journey. And I, I think it's pretty clear why the North Lawndale Employment Network has 
been able to soar to new heights because I am blessed to have the coaching and mentorship of Dr. Michael McAvey, who just spoke. He is my brother, he is a friend, he is a coach, and he knows when I'm smiling because I want to avoid being challenged. <laughs> <laughs> and then knowing that I need a minute, and then knowing that I'm here to step up. I'm here to step up and take on the challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McAvee. And I also am so excited to just welcome you all. So many other places you could be on this almost snowy, but not frigid, <laughs> February, February 9th. Um, it means a lot to me and to our staff and to our board that you've carved out the time to come and celebrate with us and lift up some dynamic partnerships and some incredible individuals that you'll meet this afternoon. So I want to start by simply just thanking my board of directors. I would ask them to please stand at this moment. These are the people, I say this every year, but who are the wind beneath my wings. Thank you. Thank you. And if they'll keep standing, I'd like to invite the members of the North Lawndale Employment Network who are employees, who are mission-driven and committed to having real results and real impact. If you will stand, those that are in the room, and you also should know that we have a big old group of folks that are watching at a watch party at the campus right now that couldn't be with us. So if you can please stand up. Thank you. Thank you. Because, you know, a dream is a dream and a vision is a vision, but you've got to have worker bees. And, um, and we are absolutely important um, part of the worker bees. I um, want to just simply say to you all that your service to NLEN is an affirmation of your commitment to putting together not just good work, but transformational work. And so for that, I thank you for your service to the organization. This past year was just incredible. As you all know, there were so many highlights and several have been shared, uh, but I wanted to just share a few more with you. It feels so good to be on our own campus. It just feels good. Every day I walk in and I smell coffee percolating and you know, and you see people sitting in the cafe and enjoying themselves, and I, I always check my moss wall. If you haven't been to the building, we have the audacity to have this beautiful green moss wall in the entryway, because if downtown can have it, so can the west side of Chicago. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, and then we, we have these beautiful murals, and I love Pat Ford. I always say this. Pat says, Brenda, uh, with Stain's Family Foundation, shows this building rises up to meet your clients. And I thought, that is such a beautiful visual for me because it, we want it to be a place where you feel elevated and proud and where you're included, where you belong, and you will be treated with the utmost of care and respect. That's what our staff do, and that's what our, our, our clients are telling us. So Pat, I thank you for that visual, that our, our building rises up to meet our clients where they are. Um, that's our intent. We've also launched, after oh, 17 years, a, a product refresh for Be Love. And we decided, y'all, that it was important to embrace urban honey. Urban honey is its own thing. And it has a vibe and a feel and an energy and a flavor, according to the chef, <laughs> that is just remarkable and unique. And so I didn't want our product to feel too perfect anymore. I want it to feel edgy and contemporary and to embrace the urbanness for which it comes. So we've changed our image and we're embracing that urban vibe. We're not gonna stand behind the veneer of perfection, 
but the beauty and the diversity of what living in an urban environment is like. Because that's what our bees are doing, and they're producing some really good stuff. So we love your feedback on the image. It's a soft launch today at the T, and I really want to give our Sweet Beginnings team a huge, huge <laughs> recognition. Because it's not easy to conduct a major product refresh, and it's been, it's been several months in the coming. And so today is the first day that we've actually put it out for display. And I also want to acknowledge that we have a couple of our Sweet Beginnings employees that are here that are helping you with your beloved cells. And we just have to say, it's all about them. You know, this work is to create jobs for folks that really do need a second chance, or a third chance, or even a what? Come on, a what? Because sometimes we just don't get it right the first or second or third time. Um, and so can I have our Sweet Beginnings folks, are they in the room? Please, thank you. Great work, thank you. Um, it's also exciting, I, I won't say names yet, but all I'll say is we're about to scale up something serious. We have some amazing partnerships that are coming to us, and and um, I, I think, you know, timing is everything, and I think now is the time. We are finally ready to step into a much larger space and create more jobs because we finally have the capacity, we have a facility, we have the talent, we are ready to, to make our beloved product, come on now, an international product. <laughs> We've also established a new program that's called Empowered Now. And Empowered Now is, a, is really an integration of two programs that, and social enterprises that we already have. And it was sort of a duh moment for me, which is, you know, U-Turn Permitted is our, our flagship reentry and job readiness program for returning citizens. But it isn't subsidized. And we know that sometimes you can hear folks' stomachs growling while they're sitting and trying to learn. And we all know you can't learn while you're hungry. And then we also understood that we have subsidized training opportunities through Sweet Beginnings. And it became like, oh, we need to combine these. So we've created an earn and learn model by combining our U-Turn Primitive Job Training with our Sweet Beginnings. So day one, you are earning and learning. <laughs> Dr. McAvee said this earlier, but we're really committed to good jobs. And defining a good job has been really important. What is a good job? A good job, essentially, is where people will make livable wages, right? A livable wage. And for some, it's a family-supporting wage if you have family. It's also where there are opportunities for advancement, where you can see the careers you, that this job can lead to. It's also being treated with respect. And I want to take it a little further. It's, it's not just about respect. It's about belonging. Where do you work where you don't feel that you're treated with respect or that you belong? It doesn't even matter how great the job is. People won't stay if they don't feel they have a place there. So we're working very closely with employers to help understand their culture and who best will thrive and advance in that culture. It's, it's a wonderful and important step forward, especially when we know that we have an unemployment rate that is the lowest it's been in 50 years at 3.4% nationally. And and knowing that the unemployment rate in, North, in, in Chicago is about 5.7, 5.9%. But I can still assure you that neighborhoods like North Mondale and Auburn Gresham, I see my friend Carlos, that, that it's still roughly around 15%. It's not reflective of what's happening on the national level. And so it is about upskilling. It, it is about culture. 
um, and empowerment. And so we're committed to that work, and that's essentially what we're calling quality jobs. And those quality jobs are here. We just have to continue to cultivate them. I'm going to move on because I can get loquacious as I've, <clears throat> as I've been told. <laughs> and um, what I want to do right now is introduce a wonderful, a wonderful and new friend to the North Bondo Employment Network. Someone who is committed to improving the quality of life for all individuals a dynamic individual, he's an inspirational speaker, he's, a, as I said, a new friend, and that is the Senior Vice President of Global Diversity and Inclusion for Hyatt Hotels um, Corporation, which is a global, global hospitality company. They have a tradition of innovation developed over, over 50 years, and at Hyatt, Corporation, Mr. Stoudemeyer, who is our keynote speaker, collaborates with the senior leadership team at Hyatt to implement culture, talent, and marketplace strategies that leverage diversity and inclusion. He is a force. And it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Tyrone, what's the song, Brandis? Call me, uh, call. <laughs> call Tyrone. <laughs> yeah, and he has an amazing voice. Tyrone, please. and welcome to the wonderful world of Hyatt. <laughs> On behalf of our chairman of the board, Tom Prickster, our president and CEO of Mark Amazium, 100,000 employees across more than 70 countries, but especially tonight, greetings, is uh, my colleague and friend and your new board member, Kelsey, please stand. Hyatt is a purpose-driven organization, and our purpose is to care for people to be their best. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is a manifestation of our purpose. It is how it comes alive. Many organizations either reacted or responded to the death and murder of George Floyd. Many reacted by giving hundreds of thousands of dollars, commitments to hire people from around the world, Commitments to do debt better by, uh, by marginalized groups, particularly the black community. 100 million people in hospitality was in hotels alone, not hospitality, just in hotels, were impacted by COVID-19. Hotels were closed around the world. People had no way to work. We had to, we had to, we had to lay people off. We started with the furlough, then we had to lay off our CEO and our chairman of the board forego their salary of two years to fund our foundation, where we were able to give our employees grants so that they continue to live and to supply. I was laid off, was furloughed, then laid off. And in the same week, George Floyd was murdered, and I went from non-essential to critical. <laughs> Go figure, right? And my boss called and says, we can't do this without you. You gotta come together, this is Saturday. I need you to have a strategy to respond to the murder of George Floyd by tomorrow. Okay, laid off, non-essential, right? I said, fine, you got it. I wanna walk you through that, if we can just go to the next slide. One more. Our change starts here. I came back and I said, we will not write a check to the Urban League, NAACP, and I'm on the board of the Urban League. I'm acknowledge my president, Karen. Where's Karen? She's in the house. She was here earlier. Karen, right? 
because we have our own issues that we need to resolve for. That we had to heal ourselves before we could heal anyone else because if one hotel wasn't open, we didn't have any money. It was very difficult. We need to fix our own issues around race, gender, orientation. We needed to help heal ourselves. So we broke it down to three goals. Who we employ, who we develop, who we advance, who we support, who we buy from, and who we partner with. Our, uh, our representation goals was to double representation people of color in respective groups, VP and above. This wasn't about hiring entry level people and our people, we can find those individuals. But if we're going to make an impact on diversity, it has to be done at the top of the house. So it's really hiring VP plus and above within the United States, uh, representation double, and then doubling representation of women outside the United States. When you look at global diversity, equity, and inclusion, it's very different from country to country, but what's universal is gender, orientation, and disability. Women in some countries are second-class citizens. By God, just a few years ago, women in Saudi Arabia was given permission to drive. So it was opportunity around the globe to really focus on making a difference in everybody's lives from an employment perspective. And then we said we would double representation of female general managers globally and people of color in the United States. And as you see, with the focus of representation of black. That was different in attention because you looked at the demographics, looked at the analytics and the predictive analytics determine how long would it take us to reach the goal of parity? And that goal is by 2025. I'm happy to share with you in the first goal with women, we're at 86% of double reputation in, it's in our third year. Unbelievable. <laughs> we then cited that who we support, and we made a commitment to really looking at opportunity youth, individuals that are around the globe between the ages of 16 and 24, who may have dropped out of high school, maybe go on to college, and the unemployed, we could make a difference in their lives. We could admit to hiring 10,000 by 2025, right? We're at 48% of that goal, globally. Those individuals that society has given up on, they don't care about, they don't have any resources. Their mother may be missing, their father could be in prison, many are living with their grandparents. We felt we could meet them where they are. If they had the right attitude, we could develop them and move them on. We have track record to show that we have individuals that have gone from doorman to front desk to general manager, which is the highest ranking job in our hotels. And by the way, I've known that when I was growing up, I probably wouldn't hospitality because some of our general managers actually live on property. Free food, free liquor, <laughs> transportation, right? What a wonderful world to really be in and really the mirror of their own town, right? We had an African American female in Atlanta, Georgia, that went to um, Georgia Tech. She was a front desk agent. And about nine years ago, we, my CEO and I were at, at, uh, at Regency Atlanta. She came up and said, I want to know how to own a hotel. Like, own a hotel? Front desk agent? You're trying to be in a hotel, right? She says, and so I'm happy to say that she's gone from front desk agent to hotel owner of five hotels. She is less, she is, she's not even 40 years old. So there's opportunities in hospitality that I didn't know when I was growing up, and many don't know today. So the opportunity use was there. But then we said that we're not in people business as it relates to employment. We had to partner with organizations that would help us to identify young talent. We disbursed one million dollars out to different organizations such as 100 Black Men, Black, Life, uh, Black Lab Matters out of, out of Atlanta to help us to convene those youth come into hotel, 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 we're able to train them and progress them through the organization. These are forgotten about youth who may find themselves in trouble because they did not have a job. African-American male came through in Ferguson from St. Louis to Chicago. And I'm a big believer that adults learn from an aha moment, they get feedback, they can self-correct, influence others, influence systems. So I'm constantly giving our leaders opportunity to experience difference. We had a field trip to Cook County Jail. And while we were in the, in the courtroom, this African-American male who came to Hyde uh, from Ferguson, he was walking around, went to the doorman, the doorman brought him in, fed him. We ultimately hired him. He sleeps in his car. The police comes, his plates are expired. He doesn't have his driver's license because he left his wallet in his locker at work. He goes where? To jail. His case comes up while sitting in the room. The judge says, I'm going to be as lean as I possibly can. Can you pay $50? Now, he has his Hyatt uniform on, Andy. And I looked at our leader and says, what are you going to do? 
You say the spam, you care people be the best. Everybody give me $2, let's get them out of jail. It's these small racks acts of kindness that will make a difference in people's lives. Then we moved on and said that during the pandemic and many of the looting and raiding in Chicago, that black businesses were suffering tremendously. We offered that we would do 1,000 pro bono hours back to the black community to help them to rebuild. While we, while we build, help them to rebuild. I'm happy to say that we accomplished that goal by more than 3,000 hours in less than eight months. Our employees took time and partnered with the Urban League and helped to do the day in life of a black general manager, the day in life of a Hispanic general manager. We did things like hotel tours. We invited her to talk about colleges and universities who couldn't, kids who didn't go back home because of the pandemic to do their homework in our, in our, in our lobbies and, they, and gave them food because they had to have internet access. We wilted computers to individuals who didn't have it because we had laid off a bunch of our employees. So we had computers, so we gave them away. That's life-changing work for individuals who are more or less than, that don't have anything. And this is one thing that I'm super proud about. I'm proud about all of it, but, but this particular one, if we're going to change the conditions in black and brown people's lives and women's lives, it's going to have to do with entrepreneurship. Helping businesses to grow. This last goal, who we, who we buy from and partner with, 10% of our spin went to the black community. Now, a little conversation's going on, that's not enough, we needed more, but at the time, a hotel closed, you were making money, and it didn't have history to show that we would do more than a million dollars. But I was foolish. We ended this year with more than $20 million in black spin, with more than 500 black vendors. That is nothing short of amazing in that short period of time. If that wasn't enough, we also decided we were hosting the Urban League's Entrepreneur Program. And we sat down and had a conversation and asked the question, what are your barriers? What was the pitfalls? What was stopping you from growing? It said, time to pay. Many organizations will pay net 120, net 60, net 30, which we just can't. We have to go and get a small business loan in order to pay our employees at a high interest rate. I am proud to say that high went from 120 to net 10. And in some days, and in some cases, same day pay. We had an African-American female that sells bamboo toilet paper. The toilet paper is so good, shall I guess, stealing it off the cart. <laughs> right? We gave her a two-year contract and paid her a year in advance. African-American female um, had just recently married her partner. They had a young baby, could not afford to wait 120 days for a check. And last but not least, and I want to go to what the other big announcement today, is we then took $20 million and put it in the world's largest black bank in Atlanta, United One, to be able to provide low interest rate loans for black brown people in that region to be able to grow. We've also partnered with Luke Capital and another $20 million to help them to help underserved communities. We're partners with Skills, our CEO and our head of CHRO serves on that board. We're looking to do things to really change lives because our purpose is to care for people to be their best. Now let me be clear, we're not gonna always get it right. And somewhere along the line, we're gonna stumble and we're gonna fall. But the Bible says a righteous man falls the seven times, seven times, seven times, seven, but he gets up, presses himself off, and gets back in line. So I'm not saying, that we have it all right. And I'm not saying I'm not going to disappoint some of you in this very room. But I will tell you this. It isn't because we don't care. It is because we don't try. But a righteous man fall the seven times. So how dare us think that we're any more greater than that? So when we talk about North Lindale, and we have a board member from our organization working on North Lindale, we had the privilege to go in and sit with them, thanks to Greg, Faulkner, who have been pushing me for several years. Brother, you need to get off your butt and do something for North Lindale. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna do this, T, you better show up. It always takes a friend, right? Greg's that friend, good guy. We sat, we talked, I shared our goals. We figured how we could marry our goals with your goals and to be able to make a difference. We're now working and partnering 
where many of you guys have the, in your menu the, t the, the, the honey on your sandwiches and your drinks, that will be now at Park Hyatt. It is now on our menu. So as we're talking to her, she says, I just want one or two hotels. I don't really want to do anything. And Kelsey um, gathered an, um, all of the general managers in this region to have a conversation about having the, hotel, the, the honey in their hotels and perhaps having beehives on top of our hotels. These types of things are life-changing opportunity to give people opportunities. This is not always about writing a check. It's about being there. It's about being present. It's about showing up. I believe that empathy plus action equals care. Being empathetic enough to walk in somebody else's shoes, then to be able to take action shows the ability to care. And that is our purpose. The employment piece, looking at the culinary part of it, having our chefs come out and spend time, doing a hotel tour with, this, with the hotels in the city of Chicago to explore the youth is something they may not know. Those types of things we're doing in our partnership and relationship, and who knows, maybe we'll build a hotel next to, your, to one of you. So, I don't know. Um, I believe somebody said, I believe I could fly. Somebody talking about flying early. I believe I could fly, be able to touch the sky. But together we stay, but divided we fall. And we come together to do these great things because we love people and because we serve people. God has placed us on this planet to do one thing, and that's to serve one another, to do good for someone else. No one will remember your nice shoes and suits and the cars you drive, right? But it's what you do for others. My Angela says it best. It's not what we say. It's not, not what we do. It's how we make people feel. So I hope we made you feel wonderful today at the Park Hyatt Hotel. On behalf of the general manager and her team, notice I said her, which is one of our goals, the double representation of women, we thank you for your participation. We thank you for your sponsorship. I'd like to close out with a, with a video of different things that we did this summer that executed and showed results on our Change Start Your Initiative. Please roll the video. So you talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. I want to simplify it. Diversity has been invited to the party. Inclusion being asked to dance. And equity is dancing to my own music. Essentially every business in the wake of, you know, the killing of George Floyd said something, but the, the actual results and the things that you can hold us to, you know, I don't hear a lot of that. Change Starts Here has three specific commitments. The first is who we employ, develop, and advance. The second is who we support. And then the third is who we buy from and work with. We're in a season of progress, which I think is fantastic, but I think we had an opportunity to really deepen that impact and make it something that sticks and is really more sustainable. Rise High is a program that we have launched, filling as many of our roles as possible with opportunity youth so that we can ensure that we are on track to achieve our goal by end of 2025. When you have people who have the interest, the passion to learn, to grow, there's no way you don't win. Here in New Orleans, they have their hands in so many local projects and continue to grow them. We would not be in a position to offer as many scholarships as we have in our community without the support of Hyatt. So if you're really going to change the economic gap with Blacks, it's going to be entrepreneurship, helping them with their business to grow. A lot of our hotels have made the effort to go into their local community and find suppliers. We're paying people with under two weeks, one to five days if needed. In other instances, we actually gave them advance orders for a year. We want to get there by making sure that we're changing lives of people in our communities, making sure that we're looking at the amount of vendors that we're dealing with, the stories behind what we're doing, not just the numbers. There's a difference when a company of the magnitude of higher wants to be inclusive. A lot of times if you give people the opportunity, then they can take advantage of it and they can pass it back to the next generation. Being a part of their Change Starts Here program, focus on black suppliers, has been great for us. 
showing other organizations that we are part of Hyatt allowed us to say, okay, well, if Hyatt took a chance on you, so can we. Those kinds of things were things that really showed our ability to show empathy plus action equals care. I am truly honored and humble to lead this work for Hyatt. But I charge you today, each of us is given 24 hours to do what we will in a day. You do something good or do nothing at all. I charge you to do something very different for somebody else tomorrow to pay it forward. Whether it's holding the elevator for someone else, whether it's paying for the lady behind you who has three kids' groceries, if it's buying coffee for someone in Starbucks, do good and good will come back. We appreciate you, we love you, we value your partnership. Book your next wedding, your next Bavada Mitzvah <laughs> at Hyatt. I don't know about you all, but I am full, not just on tea and sandwiches, but also on inspiration after having heard from the three of you. Another round of applause, please, for, for Brenda, Dr. McAfee, and Tyrone, please. Okay, so we have some awards to get to. Uh, this afternoon, we'll present four of them. The Robert Steele Creating a Community That Works Award. The Deborah Wesley Creating a Community That Works Award the Creating a Community That Works Partner Award, and the Voice of the Voiceless Award. That being said, our first award for the afternoon, the Creating a Community Partner Award, will be presented by Michael Scott, Jr. I once had an individual say to me that, Rodney, I go outside of my community for everything except a haircut. That means we don't have restaurants, we don't have flower shops, we don't have a lot of things that other communities have. So for us not to be bold would have been wrong because the people in this community deserve that. Prior to the association of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., there was a lot of industry here, there was a lot of retail commerce space here. This was an economic engine in Chicago. There were beautiful homes and safe places to visit. There were people here who had businesses, who were thriving, who did a lot of great things, and so that can happen again. People that live here and work here know that North Londo is a very special community. So many people hear about, you know, all the negatives, but we're changing that, and that's the important role of the North Lawndale Community Coordinating Council. The NLCCC was created to do a quality of life plan over here in North Lawndale. So we had stakeholders from the community who came together and said, these are the things that need to be developed. We really wanted this to be something that was done by the community for the community. We got 13 different committees. There's a chair for each committee. Committees like housing, economic development, sports and recreation, arts and culture, education, transportation, health and wellness, public safety, workforce development, the growth committee, capacity building, communications. We've been working together since 2015, meeting every month, having town hall meetings every quarter, and they've been doing all this work as if this was their job. And it dawned on me earlier this year, wait a minute, these are volunteers. And welcome to the first quality meeting of 2021 for NLCCC. It's very meaningful to me as a child of Longdale to have the opportunity to give back. Community engagement has always been a facet of the work of Lincoln Park Zoo. We continue to work with organizations like the North Lawndale Employment Network and the North Lawndale Community Coordinating Council to ensure that we're not focusing exclusively on one type of project or one type of initiative, but rather that as our relationships evolve, we, as a collective, uh, become more capable. There's no way we can rebuild this community without all these things happening simultaneously. We have a campaign to build 1,000 new affordable homes in North Lawndale. 
We have this workforce development camp that we're sitting right now. We see arts and culture and festivals taking place. We are seeing new businesses that are getting established in the neighborhood. We're working with youth. All of that is happening through the North Lawn Community Coordinating Council members and its leadership. The North Lawndale Employment Network was very honored to recognize the North Lawndale Community Coordinating Council as our Creating a Community That Works Partner Award because it's doing phenomenal work in North Lawndale. If you have these ambitious goals and you see them come to fruition, then it makes you realize like, oh, it is possible. And you have to be audacious in your thinking to really, that's how you make an impact. Good evening, everybody. Again, I'm Michael Scott, Jr., and I am a community resident in Blondale. <laughs> um, before I start, I uh, just want to thank everybody in the room. I see so many familiar faces, so many people who do such good work in North Blondale and across the city of Chicago, and it is just amazing to have your support for an organization as wonderful as this. Uh, and I would be remiss without thanking or a giving appreciation uh, to the Queen Bee, uh, who does so much great work uh, in North London. I appreciate your partnership and your service. Uh, I am here to uh, honor uh, NLCC with the Creating a Partner That Works Award. Um, six, maybe seven years ago, uh, when you're an alderman, that the time kind of mixes in your head, and especially with COVID, uh, it made it seem like those three years um, was like 20. So I'd, I'd say uh, about seven years ago, uh, I was approached by, uh, at the time, Commissioner Deer was just a, an ordinary citizen, uh, Valerie Leonard and Rodney Brown. Uh, is that your name, sir? <laughs> and Rodney Brown. Uh, and they said, hey, listen, we want to gather a bunch of community residents, and we want to uh, put a plan together that is going to change the face of North Lawndale. And I said to myself, I'm, I haven't even been sworn in yet, and I'm like, these people are trying to take my job. <laughs> um, but it, it is a, a godsend that I was able uh, to listen and hear what they wanted to do uh, and to help collaborate and make that thing happen because uh, the job of an alderman is not easy. But um, with partners like NLCCC, and this great organization, uh, they had given me a roadmap that made it not easy, but made it as easy as possible to, to honor the wishes of the community. And that's why it, it is so important and it is, it is so great to thank them. Um, the work they do, uh, you, you probably won't be able to see it. So they're probably not at every ribbon cutting and they're probably not at every meeting. But I mean, honestly, um, the work that they did with the, the award-winning quality of life plan uh, is that roadmap uh, that was given to me and now hopefully uh, is, is taken by the, the next all person um, to run and, and for 20 years have a blueprint of what the community wants and what, what they need. <laughs> and so with that being said, I want to bring to stage Mr. Jesse Green, Mr. Rodney Brown, and my dear friend Sheila McNary to accept the creating the partner that works for me. Good evening. We would like to thank North Lawndale Employment Network for this honor and all of the great works that they are, have, that is being done and that have been done in North Lawndale. It's an absolute joy working with Brenda. She's my inspiration. She's devoted her life to providing livable wage jobs that have changed many lives, making it possible for workers to own homes, start their own businesses, and provide for their families. Let's applaud her and her staff.
Thank you. My name is Sheila McNary, and I've been a proud homeowner in North Lundell for 22 years. I serve on NLCCC's executive team, and I am the chair of the NLCCC's Arts and Culture Committee. NLCCC's vision for North Lundell is a community with livable wage jobs, high quality affordable housing, quality public education for every child, streets free of violence, arts and culture, restaurants, grocery stores. Everything that a community needs to support long-term sustainable growth, not just to survive, but to thrive. On behalf of the other two members of the executive team, Commissioner Dennis Deer, who could not be here with us today, but sends his regards, and Rodney Brown, who is also an important part of the economic development that's happening in North Lawndale. We are so fortunate to have him. He's the absolute best. <laughs> we are so pleased to be joined by our Chief Operating Officer, Jesse Green. All other NLCCC committee chairs and members should please stand. If there's anyone in the room. Thank you all for standing. You all are looking at true servants of the people who spent countless hours developing the award-winning quality of life plan for North Lawndale. In conclusion, Martin Luther King said, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. We don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. NLEN, thank you for your commitment to service and your hearts full of grace and your souls full of love. Thank you for this honor. Okay, congratulations again to North Lawndale Community Coordinating Council. Uh, our next award of the afternoon is named in honor of Deborah Wesley, NLEN's founding board chair and founding member of NLCCC. Ms. Wesley has developed innovative community-based programs that have received national recognition and have helped develop the potential of children and youth, build strong community partnerships, support strong, healthy families, improve community health outcomes, and enhance economic opportunities. I was born in the great 70s to Ruby May Clavel, which is my mother, and she died at childbirth with me. And so it was my uncles, my aunts, my grandfather, and the teachers in school who raised me. I wind up moving to Atlanta, Georgia. I was married to someone who was addicted to drugs and I would write a check at the grocery store. The check would be bouncing all over town because he would steal the money out of the bank and go get high. And so those checks caused me to be incarcerated. 
when I went away, I felt for a moment, just a moment, man, I'm not going to be able to do what I set out to do. But I don't want to make it waste time. So a lot of the days was spent reading and studying. And I just would stay up all night on my bunk writing out the plan. While I was there, I was able to find out about the Bee Love Company. And I was immediately intrigued. And so then I went to North Lawndale and met with the people there. And then they just got me started on the program right away. Ruby had an entrepreneurial spirit when she came through the door. She went through our U-turn permitted program, which is our flagship program for individuals who do have backgrounds. She also participated in our Moving Forward program where she received her OSHA certification. She also participated in the Sunshine Enterprises Partnership, which is the Small Business Incubator Program. She also went to the uh, CTA Second Chance Program. They made it easy for me coming home as a re-entry program. They made it easy. I didn't have to go through a lot of the barriers that most people do to have no idea about the program. And so there is upstairs. Let me just show you this town level. I've always had a passion for real estate. And I love working commission jobs. But it's not a job, it's self-employment. We still have some account to get set up for you for your business credit, so I'll be working on it. My other company, Consult Premier Educators, I help businesses get started. Have you gotten any new clients? I met Ruby through my father. She was the reason why my father went ahead and continued to push his snow removal business. She had helped him with um, everything. It was like from a blank canvas. She helped unfold his dreams. My father trusted Ruby due to her coming with receipts. She's gonna come with facts, come with results. So once you see that, it automatically like, oh, miss get it done. That number that I was given is supposed to follow you around for the rest of your life. But the way I see it is that that time away does not dictate my future. I've worked for Chicago Transit Authority. I've worked for the United States Postal Service. I even have a real estate license, which are things that I was told that I never could have as a, a, a ex-convict. But look, God said yes, and I said yes. So here I am before you, entrepreneur, doing things that I want to do, and I'm not hindered by my incarceration. Ruby is the perfect candidate for this award because she went for it. Not only did she create a pathway for herself, she's able to hire individuals because of the work that she's doing. So she's really out there creating a community that works. I just want to help people. And when I help people, it helps me. And so if I see someone that's growing, it helps me grow. And that's just what it's about. Did I answer your question? <laughs>
And I had the privilege of helping to launch NLEN, but I knew that there was someone else that was better. Because you gotta have someone who's, who's passionate, who really understands and wants to use their imagination to change this world. So I am so proud of you, Brenda. Um, I don't regret stepping aside, all right? Um, but I feel like I did my kids when they got grown, it's time for them to go <laughs> and flourish. <laughs> that being said, it is very humbling to have any award na named after you. Because I feel like I'm standing on, uh, that, that's, that's an awesome, that, that's scary to have something named after you. I mean, other than your children kind of thing. And actually, I'm going to get a copy of this video and send it to my kids and know this is what I'm trying to do. You know, <laughs> this is really what this is about. I had the privilege of, of having a conversation with Miss Ruby. And I'm like, wow, she is kind of like me. She don't know when to stop. She just keeps going. I, w I wake up in the middle of the night. My staff know. I call them. I text, I text them. I got an idea. You know, that's because I want to change this world. I want to change this community. And there's something that each and every one of us can do in our own way that will be unique where it won't feel like you're, it's a job. It really is your purpose. And that's the purpose. And Ruby, you are living your purpose. The other thing is, I saw her today, and I said, yeah, she know how to dress like me. <laughs> uh, you know, anybody know me, my, I was raised, but you got to bring your, as a black woman, you got to bring your A game. You can't be coming in there, you won't ever see what hair bonnet on me, my pants, none of that stuff. I like, and I like to dress, okay? Um, but I am so proud of you, Ruby. I am tremendously proud, and it is an honor to have your name associated with me. It is, it is just an honor. What I did say to her the other day when she's gone through the litany of everything she's done, I said, take it, to, just take it back a little bit. Enjoy your life. Make sure that you have that self-care. While you're caring for everybody else, take care of yourself. Love your family. Don't ever miss that moment because you'll regret it, live with no regrets. So I am so, so happy to present this award in my name. Uh, so thank you, thank you for selecting. I just want to say thank you. I am so humbled, privileged, and honored to receive this award. Mr. Wesley, thank you so much for paving the way for me to be able to get this award in your honor. Man, Brenda, man, I'm just so outdone. I was not really expecting any of this. Um, but I am happy and proud to be in the room with so many magnificent people. And I just want to thank those of you who pour into North Lawndale. Because, man, sitting on a bunk and finding about this place. And I said, wow, that's in my city. I was all the way in Florida when I found out about this company. And so I am so ecstatic to have been presented such an honor. Um, I don't know what I did, but thank you so much. <laughs> All of the people at North Lawndale who continue to call on me, hey Ruby, we're doing this article, and we wanna, 
put you in there. I appreciate it. I mean, because I've not had that ever in my life as much as I had you all to love on me. I thank you all for your support and just being there, you know, a phone call away, because I think a couple of y'all on my speed dial, on my cell phone, and I like to be able to call you and, oh, hey, Ruby, this morning, yesterday, <laughs> hey, Ruby, it's an honor. And this, man, it's nothing like North Lawndale Employment Network, and so it is very worth it to put your dollars in their bank because this is the product. This is the product. This is what you're doing right here. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Ruby, congratulations. You're an inspiration to all of us. And I know that you'll do this, but it goes without saying, continue to lift others while you're rising. Um, our next award is in memory of Cook County Commissioner Robert Steele, a dedicated servant and longtime resident of North Lawndale. This award is given to a program graduate who exemplifies many of Commissioner Steele's qualities, like his dedication to service, his drive to improve the quality of life for the most vulnerable, and pride in being a North Lawndale resident. Because Alderwoman Moni Scott was called away, uh, I'm going to present the Robert Steele Creating a Community Trust That Works Award. Thank you. All right, so you guys just smile right into the My father is like such a, like a humble, cool guy. Right up your alley, I swear. Cameras, action. <laughs> like he's the type of person where he can see the bigger outcome of everything. Mark's like the good uncle around. Uh, every time I come in, if you ask him, I'll go, hey, Mark, he's like, hey, Taya. <laughs> <laughs> I never see a boss so hands-on. I talk to the customers all the time. He's always helping with the chef in the back. And I'm like, wow. I enjoy working with him. He comes out, he laughs with us. We do employee parties together, so he cares about us as family. Yeah, and that's the way it's supposed to be. I believe that when people say the cliche that it's lonely at the top, it's only because you haven't helped anyone get there. So when I get to the top, wherever that is, whenever that is, I want to make sure that there's some people up there I know. What's up with you, bro? <laughs> you what's up? <laughs> what up, man? What's up? It's good to see you. When I first met Mark, you know, Mark came through the U-Turn Permitted Program. And I recall him being a person who was really about business. So I think the role we played was provide encouragement and support for Mark. And then Mark did the rest. Hey. Look at you. Look at you. How are you? So good. Well, N-L-E-N. Wow. Being a part of this organization, I believe, has a great deal to do with my current success. Just so many different people that was very influential. They really did care about you. They really did help you. The programs really do work. I definitely got the jobs for the company and Dunkin' Donuts through NLEN. And for I saw that the cafeteria was just so far away from everybody's workstation. The vending machines, it was empty. And so I said, hey, I got this culinary background. I know how to cook. I said, let me just start making some uh, dishes and see what people think about it. And so it went over very well to folks. I began to sell tea, and it wasn't until a friend of mine came to me and said, well, I got a guy who owns a Harold's Chicken. And then he said, listen, he said, he told me to tell you to bring by there, and he would check it out. What's going on? What's up? My man, my man. Uh, the first year being Harold's Chicken, I sold 286,000 cups of tea. After being at Harold's Chicken for about two years, the owner asked me to leave. <laughs> he said that my line was longer than his, and it was time for me to go. And so he pushed me to want more. Now got uh, four locations and four major malls, uh, and then we have uh, five restaurants, standalone restaurants. I employ 63 people myself, but through all of my other establishments that I have, uh, we actually had 117. That there keeps me motivated to see that these young folks can have a living wage. 
that can still create and do their own thing and one day establish their own business. It's not so much that uh, Mark is pushing everyone to entrepreneurship, but just advancement. If you've gone as far as you can go in his restaurant, outside of there, there's still their opportunity. And he pushes individuals to that, which is unselfish. Mark has never forgot where he came from. He's one who really living out Robert Steele's vision of creating a community at work. And Mark has now become an employer partner with the organization. So he will begin employing individuals who have come through our program. So we're so excited to see that that investment of time has now come full circle. You see a black person that's rising up and he's helping out. I love that. I kind of want to be like that too. I look at him as a role model in a lot of aspects. It's just good to see somebody setting an example by showing you. It's more, it's more motivation to show you like, I can do this or this is how it's done. I have so many different ideas and ventures in my head right now and on the books that I can't wait to bring to life. And most people start off with, will this make money? But the first thing I say is, will this help somebody? Did he say 286,000 cups of tea? <laughs> it was an amazing video, but that's the part that I took away. That's a lot of tea. Uh, it is my honor to present Mark Walker with the 2023 Robert Steele Creating a Community That Works Award in recognition of his commitment to our community. Good afternoon slash good evening. How are you all doing today? First of all, let me just give all honor and thanks to God, who I definitely put at the head of my life, to the board of directors uh, for NLEN. Thank you all for staying uh, with this organization. To the wonderful Brenda, uh, who has such great tenacity, who has the audacity to hope and dream. I thank you uh, for seeing something in me years ago that I think that has encouraged me to take my life to a whole nother level. Uh, you saw something in me years ago that is the true example of what this program does for people like me and Ruby and your sons, your daughters, your neighbors, uh, your friends, your colleagues. I tell people all the time that an X is simply a crooked cross. It's up to you to turn that thing around however you do so. And so, with that being said, I do have to thank my wonderful wife who's in the building as well. She, she is my backbone, she is my help, and she is also my rock. Uh, we're so thankful, I promise you, we, we have had this restaurant about two years. We've never been in the restaurant business a day in our life uh, until two years ago. And we brought this out during COVID. Uh, and I promise you, the first year with the two restaurants that we had, we made $5.7 million. Never been in the business before. And we're so thankful about the employees that we have uh, hired, the families that we have helped, uh, and we are just encouraged to do more. We now have Four other, I mean, no, we now have a total of four restaurants. We just bought the Mellow Yellow uh, iconic restaurant in Hyde Park. We're really excited about. And let me just say to the Steele family, thank you all for loaning us, Mr. Steele. I appreciate the honor as well. Thank you all so much uh, in regards to that. But please, by all means, if you've never ever been to a Uwe restaurant, Please Google us, find us, I promise you, we got something there to make you say ooh-wee. Thank you all.
I'm back. We're almost there. We've got one more award, and it's a really good one. <laughs> Obviously, as if all of them were not. Uh, Mark, congratulations again. The final award this afternoon is the Voice of the Voice Voiceless Award. It was created to recognize those that lift others when they see an opportunity. They share what's possible and act when necessary to eliminate economic disparities. Presenting this award this afternoon is Commissioner Maurice Cox. Community-based organizations have a vision for what they want for themselves, informed by the residents in the community. It's a lack of access to capital that I really, truly believe that has held our communities and several communities back. Foundations have the resources in terms of money, but really to make the things happen, to have the impact that we hope happens in the community, which is that we increase economic opportunity and wealth for people in the community. We need to partner with the people who are close to the community, who understand the community. So the Chicago Prize was an effort from the Pritzker Traubert Foundation to ask community leaders the simple question, if you had $10 million in capital, what would you do? Being a finalist for the Chicago Prize for the North Lawndale Community Coordinating Council really did elevate our prominence in the city. That kind of exposure also helped us with our fundraising, particularly as North Lawndale Employment Network. When you have gone through this rigorous process for being a, a prize finalist, it really gave a lot of donors and investors confidence that we had a strong plan that was investment ready. The North Lawndale Employment Network is an amazing success story. It's an example of someone who has a clear vision that's embedded in community, that when you marry it with resources, can take off. The Foundation is really proud of the work of the Chicago Prize. Many of the projects that were presented have really come a long way. Things like the North Lawndale Employment Network, as well as Auburn Gresham's Health Hub and Digester. In addition, we see a lot of work happening in Englewood around the fresh market. The Pritzker Traubert Foundation is working from a, a grassroots perspective. And when you have philanthropy, the private sector, and the public sector all aligned, you have a much more impactful outcome. In the last three or four years, between Invest Southwest and We Rise Gather and other funders, we're seeing more opportunities for bigger funds to be provided. And that's critical if community leaders are going to be able to underwrite and support these big ideas. I'm so honored to recognize the Prisker Talbert Foundation. For them to come up with this concept of, well, let's inspire organizations to create plans for their capital projects, that's, that's a game changer. That changes everything because then you become truly partners in the work. That's philanthropy at its best. If we do that, our city will be the city that you know, people will be coming here because it'll be a civic environment that folks want to set roots, raise their family, and thrive. Infrastructure equity is everything. And so when funders invest in communities and put the dollars and say, you know what, we trust that you guys know what you're doing, that's where the change happens. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Isn't it wonderful to be in a room with people who feel so empowered and they're so inspired? So, uh, Brenda, just thank you for allowing me to be a little part of your journey and to have a little bit of your brilliance. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to be here and to hear these amazing stories. So, uh, I'm Maurice Cox, Commissioner of Planning and Development. 
Uh, and it's my pleasure to present the 2023 Voice of the Voiceless Award to an organization that is a true leader and an innovator in its support of community-driven community -driven neighborhood development. The foundation's effort to foster equity and resiliency in Chicago, Chicago um, are striking, particularly in terms of their strategic alignment um, with public and private sector investments underway on the Southwest sides, and uh, our collective goals to create catalytic change where change is needed most. I believe their work is changing the very paradigm of philanthropic giving that I'm sure will resonate throughout this country. And when you're fortunate enough to participate in this type of strategic alignment, you're fortunate enough to witness history in making. And I think that's what we're seeing right here in Chicago, which is why I am honored to be here today to present the voice of the Voiceless Award to the Pritzker Trubert Foundation. Here to accept the award is the Foundation's President, Cindy Mullis. Guys, first of all, I know I am the one standing in front of doors, and it's almost 5 o'clock, and it has been such an incredible, incredible afternoon. First of all, I want to thank, I, I want to congratulate Mark and Ruby and NL Triple C, because they're the real heroes in this. And so let's just take a moment. I am going to be very brief. I'm going to thank three folks. First of all, the Chicago Prize, when Brenda called me and said the Chicago Prize and, and Pritzker Traub Foundation won this award, I said, that, that's silly, because everyone in this room is what it takes to build a place like the North Lawndale Employment Network and fill it with love and fill it with purpose. What it takes to build the AGAG Healthy Hub and Carlos Nelson and fill it with purpose. So I just want to make sure that we all are congratulating ourselves for this award, because it takes all of us in this room to do it. So let's just give all of our applause. And I just want to make the point that 30 years ago, I met Brenda and Deborah and the Staines women, and they are phenomenal individuals, and many of you in this room. I was the first program officer for the Staines Family Foundation, and as Brenda and I have talked about, I was a true believer in both her mission and their mission. And it is just such an honor to be here 30 years later and see how far you've come, and understand that now you're global which has even taken us another step. So congratulations, and thank you for giving me this honor to be here. And, and finally, I do want to thank the folks that came with us today. There, it takes so many people to run the Chicago Rise. Pay and Brian are really sorry they couldn't be here. And Brian will be happy he's not here to hear me say that we are a lean and mean team as we move forward, because you know I'm always asking for one more person to help us out. <laughs> Um, but the team really, the Pritzker Traubert Foundation team does this out of love and respect for everybody here. So I just want to say thank you to all folks, the corporate folks. We have our CEO from PSP Partners. We've got our selection committee. We've got our partners and we rise together. We have so many people here celebrating all of you and celebrating this award. I also just want to also thank Commissioner Cox because there has never been a stronger partner in the city as Invest Southwest. So I just want to say thank you to everyone in this room and the city as well. So thank you for the award. Could my, could my team come up for the photo over? It is. Hi. Uh, so while it's me again, you're stuck with me. While the team is taking a photo, Tiana's gonna jump in and give them bunny ears. No? 
That was a, I'm kidding. I was kidding. <laughs> I actually, I'm going to try and bring Daniel Ash and Tiana Conley back on stage. Daniel might be trapped. If you play Red Rover, he can get through. I'm basically tap dancing so that he can make it over here. Um, I want to say thank you so much for uh, allowing me to join you. Congratulations to all of the award recipients today. It's been a delightful and inspirational afternoon. Uh, and I wish you, of course, all of the best of success. And I, I always tell people, I have the easy job. I just stand here and talk to a crowd of folks who all are really doing hard work. And I don't have to tell you because I think you know that you're doing it. So congrats to you. And thanks for allowing me to join you. Thank you so much, Brandis. You've been amazing. OK, guys, listen, I know it's 5 o'clock, but we cannot leave without the opportunity to be generous, OK? Um, and it was so amazingly inspirational to see Mark Ruby and LCCC and the Trabert Foundation. Um, but I'd like to just give you a couple of thoughts about why um, why I personally feel it's so important to give. I just thought about personally how it would feel to have my life reduced to the mis a mistake, the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life, or my life reduced to the circumstances, the limiting circumstances in which it began. And I think that NLEN truly exists to overcome the systemic inequities and bridge the gap that exists in society. And that's why I give. So, and I think you've seen really the manifestation in it in the videos and the awardees here today. Um, and your generosity in giving is what will allow us to continue to touch and impact more people in our community and have more of these people and videos and uh, people that you don't see, but really life change fueled in our community. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Daniel to tell you how you can be generous, whether you're in this room with us today or whether you're virtually joining us. Thank you, Tiana. So my job is to close. I always get that job. And so step number one, I want somebody to block the doors. <laughs> I don't want anyone leaving. Um, here's how you can give. First of all, get your phones out. Um, open the One Cause app. Scan QR code that's on your table. Somebody, get some of the young people find the QR code for the old folks. Um, scan it. And you can give via your phone. Or if you want, you can give by check and hand it to someone from the NLEN staff. It's really important, and we have levels. I want to give you a, couple, a sense of like what your donations actually support. And this is important because sometimes people think like, ah, I don't, I'm going to give enough to make a difference. Everything makes a difference. Um, so just to give you a couple of examples, um, a $500 donation sponsors an NLEN milestone graduate. So think about sponsoring a Ruby, right? $500 helps do that. A $1,000 donation um, supports professional um, headshots and photos for LinkedIn. So think about the individuals who come to the program needing to be able to compete in the marketplace for jobs. Right? We need LinkedIn profiles. We need professional shots. You can support that. Um, a $3,500 donation supports one year of career coaching, something that we all benefit from, but people don't make those type of services available to the people who come through our program. So again, every dollar makes a difference. While you're giving, I want to tell you a little bit about my why. Uh, why I love supporting this organization, why I love sitting on the board, why I love the people who work here. For me, it begins with that word, love. I've been challenging myself recently to think about love in a deeper way. And as our city struggles with issue of public safety, violence, um, gun violence, 
I've been pushing myself every time I hear a report to deep, think deeply about both victim and the perpetrator. It's too easy and we get conditioned to think about the victim, and we should. But the, when you work for an organization like NLEM, it forces you to reflect on humanity of the perpetrator. Like what, what's going on in their life, their family, that forces them to act in the way they, they've acted? We see those individuals coming back through an organization like NLEN. And it's our ability to see their humanity, to love them, that powers all of the work. Dr. McAfee talked about, like, this is soulful work. Soulfulness begins with love, right? It's stirring that love, right? Allowing it to circulate in our communities is what makes a program, an organization like NLEN, possible, allows it to thrive. So again, every dollar counts. The big grants count, the $50 donations count, and again, we can raise another $75,000 in this moment to support this extremely important vision. Tiana. Again, I just want to thank everyone for joining us. And I loved the challenge from Tyrone. He asked us to think about how we could do something to demonstrate care, and I think elevating it even to love. As Daniel said, in the next 24 hours, you've been given the perfect opportunity to think about how to do that right now. I see the numbers going up and up and up. Maybe some of your technology is getting a little stuck. So we'll give you some more time to keep working on that. But I do see the numbers increasing. I want to thank you all for your generosity of time, your support of the organization, your support financially, and your continuous uplift of the community. Brenda, is there anything that you want to say to close us out here? Come on, Brenda. No, 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 come up here. And as Brenda, as Brenda comes to the podium, I want to, first of all, thank you for the giving. Um, if you didn't give, there's an opportunity to buy Beloved products in the lobby. Um, that helps too. But I, again, I really appreciate the generosity. Brenda? Thank you to Tiana. Thank you, Daniel. And I'm just going to keep it um, really sweet. Thank you for being such sweethearts. And we hope that you'll come back and join us next year. Um, and if you haven't, um, we are also voted in the Chicago Reader for the best cafe. So if you're into that and check it out, vote for us. We might actually, you know, win. <laughs> Thank you so much, and thank you to my board, thank you to the staff. Thank you for all of your time. God bless you, and have a safe evening.